Hi guys, I'm Hayes. I'm artist and speed painter from Malaysia. Welcome to my channel and today is part 2 of the Imprimatura tutorial. And today we will talk about how to paint over your Imprimatura slash underpainting slash grisaille um, from the previous part 1 tutorial. I have a couple of tutorials on this topic and people seem to be really interested in them so I'm covering this a little bit more so let's get started but before we do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already like and comment if you have any questions and also follow me on Instagram if you want more updates and to see more of my face let's get started so let's just have a recap an imprimatura is an underpainting of sorts that deal with um, an accurate drawing that's number one and an accurate tonal composition so the lights and the darks are has to be accurate already there's no colors yet okay so that's just light and dark okay so that is was the first tutorial right now we're at part two which means we have to paint over our current imprimatura and perhaps you would be wondering why do i have to paint things twice so why do i have an underpainting and then now i have to cover the entire thing which does that mean i'm doing double work and wasting my time why can't i just paint everything one shot Okay, um, I've already explained it in the first part of the tutorial but this process is actually meant to help you in the process instead of doubling your time or hindering your process, it actually makes you faster because you're using oils, oils don't really dry as fast as acrylic so if you do this all in one session which means part one and part two of what i what we just did in one session then the paint would be wet and you can actually take advantage of the wet paint to finish the painting so most of us are not used to painting the exact color the exact uh, chroma and the exact value in every single swatch and then just migrate down into a painting but some artists can i'm not saying that uh, no one can some can definitely and but it's just easier to break it into steps so if we have the underpainting as one step and then now we focus on the color it makes us easier to focus and less distracted and less likely to make mistakes okay so once we paint over we are actually using the current layer as a guide so what guide does it provide it is our drawing guide so we follow the drawing guide as close as possible here and we are also following the direction of our brush strokes because we actually um, decide the direction of the brush stroke and our the beauty of it we plan everything in the first part of the tutorial so now all we have to do is to follow what we already lay in ground okay and we also have to follow the tones exactly so if it's like example tone 10 which is the, the most darkest of all tone so we need to make sure when we paint the color over it the color has to be a tone 10 as well if it's a half tone which is a tone 5 so which means that when we paint the color on the color has to be tone 5 as well so we need to be really good at matching tones even when we are using colors like for example orange and red are tone fives okay um, where else blue is closer to like an eight or a nine because blue is naturally dark and then um, yellow is like a two or a three because yellow is naturally light so when we mix colors example um, yellow and blue it gets green so because yellow is light and then blue is so dark when you mix together you often get like a tone 5 kind of value you have to bear this in mind and make sure they are the same value if so how do we know that these colors are the same value as the one that we've already painted during our underpainting process so here are some examples of um, different colors but same tones okay and also if you can't tell when you are painting you can just squint your eyes and see if the two swatches really just gel together if it just disappear into one another it means that you're doing things right okay so without further ado can we start now okay using it as a guide as a drawing for the tone now we're gonna redo and start and do all the blacks and the shadows so all we have to do is change the color of the blacks right now so right now all the blacks are like a, a murky red clay color um, I need it to be black 
or dark grey or blue so we can just adjust that right now we're using all the darker colours and it's really easy to do because all we are focusing on are the darks and the shadows it's so easy right okay let's just change it and keep the value the same yeah okay now i am going to do step two which is changing the mid-tones this painting is a perfect example for uh, a tutorial like this because it does not have a lot of colors you can really focus on like just adjusting the values in mid-tones there is one more thing we need to make sure of is we need to match the chroma of whatever we are painting so because shadows does not have chroma involved if the shadow is is blue it's blue plus black you know it's very simple and straightforward if the shadow is a dark red is red plus black okay it's very simple and straightforward green is green plus black or yellow plus black you know it's very very simple it's either browns reds blue greens or black okay but in mid-tone we have something that is thrown in as well called neutrals and chromas which means that the color here can either be pure strong or they can be neutral for example it can be orange which is bright orange or it can also be a pale orange which is having a little bit of chroma or some a really 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 pale orange all these are the same value but right now you have to figure out two things first is the color and the second is the chroma of whatever you're painting in this stage so make sure you get your chroma and your hue correct. Step 3 is really simple. Step 3 is you assess everything and then you fix whatever mistakes you've made. Okay, try and keep to the original brush strokes here and this time put in some flare and finishing touches um, like cool brush work or just to finish it out a little bit and also this time you get to put on highlights so highlights are not all white if you have to put a white highlight make sure you paint a color first and put the white on top of it so that the slight color will fringe around the white and then it will sparkle when you see it from far so this is the way that we can um, control our coloring process to uh, give it a more realistic look okay and that's it it's so simple isn't it just do it and then once you pass this three stage you can repeat your fixing and fixing and fixing for as long as you want but generally this is just the steps it's so easy if you split it into the process like this and um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already Ask me any questions in the comment section and like my video please. Also follow me on Instagram at Hayes Long. Bye, see you again.